Hi guys. Have you seen this video? Diane Feinstein confronted by uh, a lot of children in school confronted on the Green New Deal. We are trying to ask you to vote yes on the Green New Deal. Okay, I'll tell you what. We have our own Green New Deal. Some scientists have said that we have 12 years to turn this around. Well, it's not going to get turned around in 10 years. What we can do Senator, if this doesn't get turned around in 10 years, you're looking at the faces of the people who are going to be living with these consequences. The government is supposed to be for the people and by the people and all the You know what's interesting about this group is I've been doing this for 30 years. I know what I'm doing. You come in here and you say it has to be my way or the highway. I don't respond to that. I've gotten elected. I just ran. I was elected by almost a million vote plurality. And I know what I'm doing. So, you know, maybe people should listen a little bit. I hear what you're saying, but we're the people who voted you. You're supposed to listen to us. That's your job. How old are you? I'm 16. You I can't vote. Well, you didn't vote, vote for me. Well, she, she, I'm she voted. It doesn't matter. We're the ones who are going to be impacted. It doesn't matter. We're going to be the ones who are impacted. I understand that. I have seven grandchildren. I understand it very well. Senator, the cost of and not taking this action is far higher than the cost of what the Green New Deal will be. And there is what? enormous popularity for this bill around okay. the whole country. Here's and we're asking you to be brave proposing. and do this for us and, and for your grandchildren. Get enough for okay. I'm trying to do the best I can, which was to write a responsible resolution. Any plan that, that doesn't take bold, okay. transformative okay. action is not going to be what we need. We well, need you know better than I do. So I think one day you should run for the Senate. Great. And we then you do it your you, way. But by we that time, in the meantime, by that time, there's gonna I be just, a big problem. I just want a, a big you. election. Yeah, that would All right. Oh wow. What do you make of this life that we're living? Those children, Common Core, they're taught that climate change is real and the science is real science. And 97% of scientists around the world all agree man is causing global warming, climate change, and they're being lied to. And it's not just the young kids, but you've got the high school kids and you've got the teacher and they confront Diane Feinstein and she is not a very nice woman at all ask you to vote yes on the Green New Deal. Okay, I'll tell you what. We have our own Green New Deal. Some scientists have said that we have 12 years to turn this around. That's right. The IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, their last assessment, their report, so dramatic. Oh my God, we're going to die in 12 years if we can't turn this around. So these kids hear this. What, what could these kids be thinking? Okay, when you're a child, you actually believe adults tell the truth. 12 years? We've got 12 years to turn this around. Otherwise, the earth is just going to, I don't know, burn up with the global warming. Can you imagine being that young Hearing these adults, scientists from around the world, oh my God, there's a consensus, and they're saying 12 years. Don't you think they're thinking, okay, I'm 12 now, 12, I'll only be 24. Don't you think that that could scare some children? See, this is what really gets me. These adults, these adults who have absolutely just no conscience at all, no feeling about what they're doing to the children, traumatizing them. Mainstream media, traumatizing them. And I understand that that's the point. But this Feinstein creature, whoa, boy, how old are you? 16. Well, you didn't vote for me. 
Dianne Feinstein, you're supposed to be representing all Californians, not just the ones that vote for you. And you got a million that you even got one person in California to vote for you is really quite, uh, well, that, that in my mind, it just presents this incomprehensibility that I cannot reconcile at all. How dare we do this to these children and the Green New Deal? Oh my God, you know, this teacher brings in these kids, they confront this monster. Um, and the teacher is also so thoroughly indoctrinated. And we all know the truth, right? Top scientists slam and ridicule United Nations IPCC climate report, their last assessment each time. And that was the sixth assessment coming out of the IPCC. Every assessment that they've issued, the IPCC, every one, one, two, three, four, five, and six, they have renowned scientists around the world critique it. And every time they say the IPCC should be disbanded and it still goes on. And these lies still carry the day. Climate scientists and experts trash the methods, the findings, the claims of the sixth assessment. That's where these kids got the 12 years. Well, wait a second. Did they get it from that? Did they read the IPCC assessment? Probably not. They got it from that, oh, Ocasio-Cortez. We've got 12 years. We only have 12 years before. Now, the truth is, I think, yeah, th this planet is obviously not going to make it, but it's not due to global warming. It's due to the geoengineering and the weather modification and, well, <laughs> their deliberate efforts to kill off the population but dare to tell anybody about that. Oh my God, you are so nuts. You're just crazy. You're off your meds. You're such a conspiracy theorist. And then you respond with, well, have you done any research on any of those agendas that I just spoke of or any of those topics? And what you get is a roll of the eye. Oh God, what? Facts, evidence, research. What does that matter? I have my opinion. Is it really your opinion? Or did you get it from mainstream media? Are you parroting back an opinion that is not yours because you have no basis, an independent basis for that opinion? Because you've never done any research. The stupidity is, it's at a level of traumatizing. These children, what a world, man. What a world they are growing up in. And every adult, whether it's your child or not, whether you have children or not, every adult has a responsibility to children to tell them the truth and to not traumatize them. Well, I guess we just are not living that what are we living? What are we living? I'm going to read a whole lot of this. Scientists who have come out and critiqued that report, and their critique is quite, well, clear. It's clear. Uh, and in fact, based on leaked drafts of the controversial report, the, the assessment that came out back in September, Critics had been debunking and ridiculing the United Nations climate claims for weeks prior to the official release. Once the summary report was officially released in Stockholm, the deluge of criticism accelerated with more than a few top scientists calling for the United Nations IPCC to be disbanded 
entirely, despite more than 16 years of essentially no increase in global temperatures, politically selected IPCC experts were more certain, more certain this time than ever, that humans were to blame for global warming. 95% sure the claim has confused some of the world's most respected climate scientists. How can they justify this? It's beyond me. That from Professor Judith Curry, Chair of the School of Earth and Atmospheric Scientists at the Georgia Institute of Technology. She quit. She could no longer remain at work due to her colleagues, the college, everybody came down on her and she was so vilified. That's what they do to people who go against the official narrative. Those who have integrity and they're actually stating truth. You get vilified. These children deserve the truth. And any adult in their right mind, like Diane Feinstein, who knows full well that this climate change, global warming crap is just that, it's crap. And if she was a decent human being, just a decent human being, she would be trying to educate these children with the truth. But no, let's just keep them traumatized. And you, Diane Feinstein, you tell them, uh, I'm not going to listen to you. Uh, go away. You know, it's, uh, you didn't vote for me. You're not even old enough and I don't represent you, and to hell with you, and I mean, that was essentially, you know, the response from this horror show right here, Diane Feinstein, 30 years. You know, did Californians actually vote for this woman? Because I... I, I can't imagine anybody in their right mind voting for this woman. Anyway, um, so Judith Curry stated, it makes no sense that the IPCC was claiming that its confidence in its forecasts and conclusions has increased. IPCC has thrown down the gauntlet if the pause continues beyond 15 years, and it already has, they are toast. Unfortunately, scientists were saying that with their first assessment, assessment uh, saying it with their second, third, fourth, fifth assessment, they're clearly not toast. The lie is carrying the day. I can't believe it. Dr. Curry said it was time to shut down the whole IPCC. We need to put down the IPCC as soon as possible, not to protect the patient who seems to be thriving in its own little cocoon, but for the sake of the rest of us whom it is trying to infect with its disease. Meteorology professor Richard Lindzen at the uh, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, who served as a lead author with the third IPCC report, said this, the United Nations body had truly sunk to a level of hilarious incoherence with its latest assessment. Uh, going on, he said, finally, in attributing warming to man, they failed to point out that the, that the warming has been small and totally consistent with there being nothing to be alarmed about. It is quite amazing to see the contortions the IPCC has to go through in order to keep the international climate agenda going. An embarrassment of internal inconsistency beyond misleading, entirely 
self-serving. The Humpty Dumpty-esque report, once claiming to represent the consensus of scientists, has fallen from its exalted wall and cracked to pieces under the burdensome weight of its own cumbersome and self-serving processes, which is why all the government scientists and all the government's men cannot put the IPCC report together again. That came from climate experts Patrick Michaels and Paul Chip Knappenberger with the Center for the Study of Science at the Cato Institute. They were calling for the United Nations report to be torn up and tossed out, along with the entire IPCC process, which produced such a misleading and potentially dangerous, yeah, it's dangerous, because you have these kids who well, they hear mainstream media reports, and then they have that Ocasio-Cortez. We only have 12 years, and then they're freaked out. Yeah, dangerous, very. Uh, lies are not a good thing. They do such destruction. Um, they said it's beyond misleading, entirely self-serving. They continued on saying the IPCC's climate models needed fixing as evidenced by the fact that the United Nations could not even track the Earth's average temperature for the last 10 to 20 years. The IPCC report, the two experts continued, uh, that's Michaels and Knappenberger, the two experts continued. The IPCC report was not only obsolete, on its release, but completely useless as a basis uh, to form opinions or policy. Dr. Benny Pizer, or Pazer, with the Global Warming Policy Foundation had harsh words for the latest report, saying it was based on flawed models that cannot accurately predict future temperature changes. The IPCC are gambling that temperatures will rise soon. My own reading of the report is it's more a political message than a scientific one. They ignore the fact that their models have problem, have a problem, and they are unable to say when the temperature will start rising again. Dr. Pazer blasted the late, leaked version of the report as a staggering concoction of confusion, speculation, and sheer ignorance. The IPCC appeared to have run out of answers to explain away the widening gap between its predictions and reality, a fact that even most of the establishment media have started to notice. In the last 16 years, there has been essentially no increase in temperature. Before 1980, the world saw some three decades of cooling. Since 1950, there have only been 20 years of warming, and nobody knows when the temperatures will start to rise again. And we allow teachers to teach these kids um, that climate change and global warming, coming the, the, the science coming out of IPCC, this is what the kids are being taught. I mean, I almost want to cry because, you know, I think, well, you know how I feel. Around the world, governments are wasting trillions of British pounds or dollars on useless technology, which have no effect on the climate but are causing economic hardship and environmental damage. It, the IPCC is doing a huge disservice to proper science with such tactics, and more and more people are losing trust in their claims and predictions. Unless global temperatures begin to rise again in the next few years, it is very likely going to suffer an existential blow to its credibility. Will it? They're killing off truth. And the lie has become truth. So, will it? No. It, this is just 
it's just going to carry on this way. When you have six corporations owning mainstream media, when you have politicians who only care about how much you know they can be bribed, um, when you have people who only you know care about money, um, and when you have you know just ordinary people, your your whole entire population filled with people who don't give a shit about anything and will not will not do any kind of research to have an informed opinion. They just believe their opinion, uninformed, misinformed by mainstream media. That, well, that's enough. We, we've reached a point of ignorance that is so profoundly dangerous. Um, climatologist Dr. Roy Warren Spencer, who serves as principal research scientist at the University of Alabama in Huntsville and formerly worked as a senior scientist for climate studies at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, said... Uh, probably the biggest omission of the report continues to be the almost total neglect of natural forcing mechanisms of climate change. Oh, that seems odd, doesn't it? Yeah. Dr. Spencer said the IPCC summary report released last week, September of last year, reveals a dogged attempt to salvage the IPCC's credibility amidst, amidst, mounting evidence that it has gone overboard in its attempts to scare the global public over the last quarter century. Executive Vice President Ken Hapala with the Science and Environmental Policy Project compared and contrasted the IPCC report with another major climate report that takes a more realistic approach. That report produced by the non-governmental international panel on climate change. The, uh, their report titled The Climate Change Reconsidered to Physical Science and the Summary for Policymakers paints a very different picture using many of the same studies cited by the United Nations. Um, the experts and Hippala himself stated that the sensitivity of the climate to increase in carbon dioxide is missing from the IPCC report. Yet, this is the entire political issue. Well, well, did you hear that? Should I read it again? The fact that the sensitivity of the climate to increases in carbon dioxide is missing from the IPCC report? How could that be? They have produced an assessment, this time, number six, that is so clearly just absurd. It's a farce. And yet we have mainstream media and those scientists who are funded by the, uh, the era of climate change and global warming. They get the funding. You go against the official narrative, you don't get any funding. Those are the people who are actually claiming that this is real science. And they're claiming CO2 is the reason. Yet the IPCC didn't even factor in carbon dioxide. Did you, do you, are, are you getting how staggeringly um, staggeringly not the truth at all. Is the climate sensitive to human emissions of CO2 or not? Does an increase in the molecules of CO2 
from three to four per 10,000 parts of air make a difference in climate? The UN does not know. <laughs> Further, the report glosses over the fact that there has been no statistically significant rise in surface temperatures for about well over 16 years now. Criticism worldwide about the United Nations effort to downplay the elephant in the room. Instead, it asserts a greater certainty in its work than prior reports. It reduced the uncertainty from 10 to 5 percent with no empirical basis. Are you getting what I am reading here? Are you getting what I am reading? No science. And you're going to be traumatizing these children. And Ocasio-Cortez, who has been selected to be, you know, out front pushing this Green New Deal, you're going to reshape the world, take control over every aspect of somebody's life. You're going to tax them up the wazoo, make them pay for the reshaping of the world. And it's all based on a lie. And we still can't get through to people. It's unbelievable, this world that we're living. Uh, the purpose of a physical science is to describe nature and to understand how it works. It is becoming increasingly evident that the IPCC science does not describe nature, yet the IPCC intensifies its certainty in its work Climate scientist and accredited IPCC reviewer Nick Lewis noted that if 2001, 2002, 2003 were used as a starting point, it would suggest that the globe has actually been cooling by a statistically insignificant 0 0.02 Celsius to 0.05 Celsius per decade. Scientists all over the world are now openly saying that this IPCC report should be the last. It should be the last, but we heard that with the first assessment, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and it still goes on, and we still have mainstream media freaking out children. Professor Miles Allen with Oxford University's Climate Research Network, who has worked extensively with the IPCC, blasted many of the anti-carbon schemes pursued by governments as a waste of time and money. He said the assessment five, the uh, their fifth assessment ought to be the final United Nations IPCC report. It's cumbersome production process misrepresents how science works. The idea of producing a document of near biblical in fallibility is a misrepresentation of how science works and we need to look very carefully about how the IPCC what it does in the future. The number of independent experts calling for an end to the largely discredited United Nations panel and its reports is growing fast. Some prominent voices in the climate discussion have been calling for the climate scamsters to be prosecuted and jailed as a way to deter future scientific fraud. Much of the establishment media continues to parrot United Nations climate scaremongering, but it appears increasingly likely that unlike the growing polar bear population, the IPCC is standing on thin ice. No, it's not. It's on solid ground because it destroys everyone that has a voice that has gotten out there to the public and it makes sure that all of these highly respected renowned scientists and climatologists never you don't hear from them and you got the public so indoctrinated to believe that their opinion is worthy. It's, you know, my opinion equals facts and evidence. Wow. Um, but 
I have had an awful lot of adults who literally refused to look and examine what the IPCC was doing, look at the critiques. No, no, you're just crazy. So every adult who does that, you are absolutely 100% complicit with what you are doing to these children. Climate of fear, global warming alarmists intimidate dissenting scientists into science. A recently released IPCC study on global warming has triggered public alarmism. The complexity of, uh, complexities of climate change are not fully addressed. Uh, Professor Richard Lindzen of MIT pointed out more than 10 years ago in a 2007 article Scientists who dissent from the alarmism have seen their grant funds disappear, their work derided. Even worse, they have been libeled as industry stooges, scientific hacks, or worse. What, what happened with Dr. Judith Curry Uh, it, it's, she had to quit. The stress, the pressure that takes place, especially in, in universities, any climatologist or scientist that speaks out about the great lie, climate change, global warming, they know the consequences. They've watched people like Judith Curry have to suffer them, have to suffer them. So a lot of people just shut up. A whole lot of people don't really care. And I'm talking about those involved in this climate change, global warming business. It's a business. Um, those who just don't care and continue to rely on the funding uh, that you get from governments don't speak out. It's only you know, those who have the courage. So that's why it's important for all of us to circulate their voice. Please circulate this information. Please circulate. You don't have to circulate my video, but please circulate this information and get it to parents because these kids are being taught such a lie. And to have now these people like Ocasio-Cortez come out and freak everybody out. You know, oh, we only have 12 years, so we've got to ram this Green New Deal down your throat, get it passed, and do those radical changes. And it has nothing to do with climate change and global warming. My God, what the hell are we living? What are we living here? All links are below.